Hey everybody. So I am here today at Mosey's Production Machinists. Uh, they have been gracious enough to open their doors to us, let us come take a tour, check out the place, talk about how they use ProShop. And I'm here with John Zamuda, new president. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Um, so one of the things I just love about this industry is how open everyone is to sharing and contributing back. And you guys are just a prime example of that. So thank you for having us. Absolutely. Um, tell us a little bit about the history of Mosey's before we do the okay. tour. Mosey's was established in 1975. We're a veteran owned small business. Um, we are about 33 people currently and um, run lights out 24 seven when, when we can. A fair amount of automation and robotics on five axis lays and horizontal mills and bar loaded smaller live tooling lays. Awesome. And ISO and AS certification. So we the are, industries you serve are? We do aerospace and medical device. So mm -hmm. a laboratory equipment, aerospace, some um, natural gas, some oil and gas, but not too much of that. Yeah. And basically anything that has volume that fits automation and an OEM. We, we look for mostly OEM service. Okay, awesome. And you became a pro shop client, remind me, <laughs> three years ago? About three years, yeah. Okay. Three years ago. And uh, we'll get in and talk more about what that journey has been like as we okay. go through the shop. But uh, yeah, let's go check it out. Come with us. So John, I'd love to talk a little bit about how your office processes have changed okay. since uh, since before and after Pro Shop. Okay. Um, Joanna Hooper is in charge of any incoming purchase orders, scheduling, and communication with our customers. And before Pro Shop, we did all that on paper with our old ERP system. A lot of data mining and putting putting information together so we could sit down and have a conversation with our customers about lead times and delivery dates and contract type items. And since ProShop was implemented, that got a lot easier on the digital side. What's your, your thoughts on that? My take on ProShop and it, yeah. it's been exciting to honestly grow the relationship with the customer. I have more time to spend with them instead of chasing clients. And that's been very exciting. That's important. It's very so. important, building relationships, giving them accurate information, real time information. Less running around for you, yes, less. I run around because I like it, <laughs> but it's it. I have the information. Second. Right. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. She walk around and she's a rolling cart, yeah. little rolling cart. She put her laptop on the rolling cart and push the rolling cart around the shop, <laughs> pulling up information, <laughs> asking. Yeah. Asking yeah. operators questions, getting answers, so that she can talk to our customers and let them right. know where the parts are in process. Real time data. Right. And has the lead time when you used to process a new PO to when work orders were ready, has that time shrunk? Yes, or, it has. Can you give me some so, sense of it? Yeah, getting the PO, putting it in the system? Yeah. Minutes. Yeah. Compared to me walking around to each department and handing order material to your quality plants, make sure you put it on the machine, which is enter in the ERP system, procurement gets pinged, right. QC gets pinged, everybody knows what to do. Right. I'm not going around telling people what to do. The system <laughs> is working for us. I love it. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, Joanna, thank you very no much. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. it. Thanks. Okay. So, um, yeah, on our way by, let's uh, just take a look. And people always love parts. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look at some of these parts you got here. So here's here are a few of the industries that we serve. We're in oil tool space so we do some work for satellites and some laser equipment that they use in space lasers we do housings and frames for laser equipment uh, ventilators we don't do very much in ventilators currently but for a while we were pretty heavy in ventilator production gas analyzing for natural gas mm -hmm. um, airframe so we do parts for oh, yeah 737 max we very do nice. that's a cool part yeah, that's a it's a cover it goes on the fuselage. It's an access panel cover. Nice. So we do some hydraulics, um, some EV. That's that's a manifold that goes into EV for mm -hmm. um, hydraulic cooling and heating. Yeah. Hydraulics in in gas compression and in fluid motion control. We do aircraft refueling a fair amount in the aircraft refueling market and medical laboratory. 
So machines that are in labs, centrifuges and such, and hydrogen compression. We really aren't, aren't doing much currently in that, but for a while we were pretty, pretty heavy in hydrogen compression for um, hydrogen vehicles. Very cool, quite, quite, a, quite a variety of sizes and materials and geometries for sure. Yeah, we try, we try to keep our, our options open and our industries diversified as much as possible. That's smart. Yeah. When one is up and the other's down, you kind of level load everything. It's helped us throughout the years when we've had downturns, that's for sure. Yeah. In our shop before 9-11, we were very concentrated in a couple of shops and mm -hmm. our customers. And it was it almost killed us because we weren't diversified enough. Yeah. So I know that's it's an important lesson to learn. Yep. All right. Awesome. Our library. <laughs> we have a library so people are free to check out books whenever they want to learn something and we may have some reference or source material for them it's mostly business mostly culture yeah uh, how to achieve open communication how to have a healthy culture um, management strategies and then finance and i see on here this is one of my favorite books of all time i talk about it all the time very uh, influential in the growth of our shop years and years ago, yep. and especially the importance of building business processes that are repeatable. One of the books that's required reading when you get into management is The Goal. Yeah, as it should be. Everybody here has to read The Goal at a certain point and above. I love it. That's, yeah. that's very forward thinking. That's awesome. All right, so it looks like shipping and receiving. It is shipping and receiving. So Pro Shops really helped us out shipping and receiving as far as getting parts packaged and sent to the to the correct locations, keeping track of upcoming pull from inventory orders to ship out. Yep. We built a dashboard for shipping and receiving to see the orders that are coming in the next three months. Okay. And when they have free time, they can start packing and staging any items that are already in inventory so it's ready. It's cut down a lot of that time in the morning for them. So what uh, you use the build to inventory and also direct build to customer? We what do, percentage would you say you do of those? So our build to inventory is probably most of what we do. Because okay. as soon as it's finished on a build to inventory order, goes in inventory, immediately comes out on a pull from inventory order. Yep. And that's how we, we do that cycle. Okay. Uh, we do some discrete orders which are build to customer. But right. most of them are, are BTIs or build to inventory and then are shipped on PFIs, pull from inventory. Right. And is this also where things are staged to go to outside processing and things yes. like that? Yes. Everything comes in and is staged over by the forklift or in this area here. Yeah. Until it's cleared with inspection, packed, and then put on the truck to go, or if they pick up, prepared for them to pick up. Okay, right yeah. on. I love the lighting in your shop. It's nice and oh, bright yeah. in here. Yeah, it was all fluorescence before we switched to LED bulbs and electrician came in and direct pulled the ballast out for us on most of them. So as as they go out, like there's some over there that are out, they come in and they take those ballasts out and direct wire more LED. Nice. So by the time it's done, we'll have no ballast and be full LED. Love it. Eventually, I want to go high bay. It makes such a difference for the environment in the shop. Yeah, absolutely. So you got some big machines here. Tell us what kind of yeah what you what you got okay. out here in the shop. So on this side of the, the building, we have our horizontal machining centers. We have four horizontal Morisiki 500 millimeter machines. They're attached to a pallet pull system. The first system here is on 34 pallets. So we have okay. 34 sets of fixtures that are semi-permanent setup. When material comes in, the personnel in, the, in these workstations can load material, run the pallets through, and it really minimizes the amount of time to set up. Uh, new jobs take a little bit longer, but there's a lot more to a setup here than there would be on a on a normal vertical mill. Sure. Looks to get two operator chain stations yep. and double stack on your on your tombstones pallets. Yeah, two story pallet pool, 34. This this system, I'm sorry, is 24. The first system it, on the other end is 34. Okay. So, same same footprint though, same size machines. Each machine carries 240 tools in a matrix, so we can stock them up pretty good. Yeah. Not have to change it up. It looks too like much. you combination of billet and castings and other stuff like that. Yep, all kinds of stuff. So we'll do castings, forgings, billet. We do some plastics. Our material range is 
all the way from plastic through titanium. We're not really into the the super high temp stuff like Inconel, but that's just because we haven't had that order come through yet. Sure. We'll try anything. Right. Yeah. So I see you have a big TV here up with Pro Shop on it. Um, yes. So that's so whatever work, and you have another one here as well. Yeah. So. So what they're doing here is on the, the, the television, they're using that to collect their in-process check data. So right. if they go to the surface plate, we have digital height gauges, standard height gauges, the, the whole accoutrement of tooling. And the operators will check, check their parts, record the data out at the work order level for that operation. On this side is where they do clocking in and out of jobs, clocking in and out of time clock, yep. um, any other communication that they need to do throughout the shop. That's done on the smaller system so that they don't interrupt somebody that's checking parts. That's basically for schedule and checking parts. Got it. We have that at each system, same setup. Nice. Yeah, standardization is important. Yeah, we put more more points of usage out in these systems because there's two to three people always in the same location. They don't they don't have to share. One person can sure. can use as the other person's checking parts. Yeah, yeah. So I noticed we also just went past a bunch of TVs up here. Do you want to yeah. share a little bit about what these are about? Sure. Yeah, so what do we got here? All right, so from left to right, we have our schedule on this side. This is a query that, that Joanna and customer service who you met set up on a must leave by date status. So okay. they're all red at the moment. We had some machines go down last week for several days. So it bumped us pretty significantly. We're getting that caught up now, but um, this tells everybody on the floor when their operation needs to be ready to go outside to whatever process may be next. So okay. that's a that's a way for them to track their activity and, and what they need to focus on. This is a Power BI dashboard that we built using the, the data from ProShop. We bring it into Excel and then, then um, send it to Power BI where we graphically show quality, on-time delivery, cost of quality, um, Value added, value added labor. So yeah. all everything that we're collecting sure. time wise. This particular screen is showing DPPM. So as you can see from December forward, we had a huge spike in DPPM. We had a fairly s substantial rejection from a customer of outside parts that were processed outside okay. that really spiked our DPPM. We got it down to zero, spiked yeah. again for a couple of months, back down to zero, and then we're around 1300 average. Our biggest customer measures us by DPPM okay. and their standard is 1500 or less. So All we right. measure ourselves on that same standard. Sure. So you can see um, our current month, 47 K. So we've had a lot of, not a lot, but we had, didn't ship a lot yet and had some parts come back, which really affected the it's number. It's so hard to do DPPM when you're a sm relatively small volume. 100 piece right? orders. Yeah. 100 piece orders. Absolutely. Yeah. But we, we, Measure it, we track it, we display it. No secrets, everybody understands exactly the right. condition of the shop. There's actually five screens in this. It's on a timer, it rotates through. Yeah. So this will show quality as a percentage, internal. Oh, so it just changed. Yeah. Oh, this is our NCRs. So yeah. we measure our NCRs by cost code, yeah. cost of that cost code, and who it affects. Sure. So everybody knows exactly, like you know, what activity, what activity is, is driving what cost and who is being affected by that. Sure. Puts a, puts a name to the quality as well. Yeah. Try to make a personal connection, make a personal connection to the people on the floor and who we're supplying, then it drives more well, connection. It drives better quality, you know, more purpose. I like it. Purpose is important. Also, what will happen next on this is it'll it'll rotate to the actual NCRs. So oh, really? the okay. yeah the NCR module. Yep. It'll show the actual NCRs, people responsible, what was affected, part number, and everything. Nice. Yeah, you'll enjoy the new native uh, Power BI integration we have coming out. It's a beta testing right now. Yeah, I saw the demo on that. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're excited for that. And then fixturing module. Right now, it's it's all of the job boxes and we'll get to that when we when we end up on that side of the shop but all of our job boxes and fixtures are in the equipment module and checked on a frequency to make sure that 
Nobody's borrowed any hardware from it, and right. the job box has any special tooling that's supposed to be in there, any work holding that belongs in there. So when we kit and provide the the set of people with their yep. their job kits, they're full. Right. You know, it's not something so, missing. I guess maybe we'll get it. Do they take pictures of what all should be included? Mm -hmm. And then they compare that visually against what's there. So when you go into the actual maintenance of the item, yeah. there's instructions and pictures on that maintenance. So when Sonny, our, our tool crib attendant, um, pulls that up, he, he sees it. He's the one that takes the pictures and builds the maintenance item. Okay. So, yeah. I love it. That's fantastic. Let's go see some machines here. All right. Here we're running a fluid transfer valve fitting. Oh yeah, out of a casting. Yeah, it's actually a print. It's not a casting. Oh, it's a 3D print. It is a 3D print. 3D metal print, wow. Yep. So one of our customers supplied the 3D printed forms and we're machining them to see how they machine and do any adjustments that may need to happen on the print printing side. Wow, that is very cool. Oh wow, it's lighter than I thought. That's an aluminum. Yep. That's really neat. So, so this I'd, is a learning experience. It doesn't act like a casting or a billet would. A little right. bit different, not not a lot, but a little bit different in flexibility and, and what it does under tool load. So right. we learned a fair amount on this, this project so far. So I'm seeing at a lot of your workstations, you have double monitors. Mm -hmm. um, obviously here we have the drawing, there's a schedule below, mm -hmm. but so I'd love to hear you share why you went dual monitors and like what the impact has been. Okay. So the reason for the dual monitors that, and it'll be at every workstation is so we can have our blueprint up all the time. Yep. And then below that, when they're collecting IPC data, their in-process check data or getting work instructions or whatever information they may need, they can use that secondary monitor to bring that information up. At times, Mark also uses a tablet. So right. he can put setup sheets on the tablet at the machine and Take get his data as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we try to provide as much as we can. Um, and what is the actual computer device running this? This, this is on a Raspberry Pi. It's on a Raspberry Pi. You see it there on the side. It's oh, yeah. uh, so we, like a fifty dollar device kind of thing. Or at whatever. the time. <laughs> oh yeah, they've gotten expensive. I should have bought more of them then. <laughs> but yeah, with with COVID, -COVID yeah. we got those before COVID. But with COVID, uh, they went up to two hundred and something each, and they were almost impossible to find. I haven't yeah. checked in the last couple months. They may, may have inventory again. Yeah. But yeah, the, the price skyrocketed. When I put these in, I bought a dozen of them and they were about 48 bucks for the whole kit, for the case and the fan and everything. Amazing. Not so much now. Yeah. So you have a couple of big horizontals that are robot loaded here. These are five axis slaves, dual spindle, turret, oh, sorry. Yes, five, axis, five axis uh, milling head in them. Okay. These guys run fully unattended yeah. with the right parts, the right material. They'll run for several days without needing any tool changes or intervention. Every day, quality will come in, take a couple parts throughout the day, run them through the CMM, make sure everything is as it should be. The machines also do internal probing. We have Renishaw and Bloom probes in them, so they do dimensional checks, wow. and then we verify. So I have never seen or noticed this before your chip bin is on a on a rotating table so it doesn't pile up yes that's amazing before we had roll off hoppers right and the hoppers would fill overflow sure and in some cases on other pieces of equipment it would draw the chips back into the conveyor and jam the conveyor and if that happens on a horizontal it actually floods so right. the coolant will overflow and you'll have a lake so we used to come down every so often throughout the weekend or the evening right. and switch out roll off hoppers. We got tired of making the drive back continually. Yeah, sure. So we put these in it. It's, I is, can run two days on this hopper. Is this an off the shelf system? It's a pallet shrink wrapping table. Pallet shrink wrapping They run on table. DC motors so you can turn them down to half an amp and they don't overheat. And I can spin even slower than this or I can spin much faster. That is so cool. What a great idea. And our next problem was running out of coolant. So we put a float system drips coolant from a 150 gallon tank. So it keeps the machine half full all the time. Right. That'll last about two days. This whole setup will last us about two days. Every two days we gotta swap it out. But it'll last the whole weekend. That's brilliant. I love it. Yep. 
So and then we've also just passed a few just kind of standalone lathes sure. here. These Doosons are bar loaders. So up to two and a half inch capacity, 36 inch bar loader capability. Yep. They also run through the evening on the right materials. Uh -huh. You can't run just any material, of course, but sure. aluminum bars are plastic bars. We just let them run. We come in in the morning and take a sampling, the beginning and the end. This one is running. Yep. His system went to sleep. And so here with just the layout of these work cells, you've obviously gone your double monitors horizontal right on top of the chip conveyor with yeah. a workbench below it. Yeah, we mounted the monitors to the chip conveyor, got this server rack keyboard mount and oh, riveted yeah. it right to the side of the conveyor so they can actually if they wanted to, they could close this up and get it out of the way. Sure. And then when it's down, it's, it's usable and it's not on the table because they have small, small surfaces. They use the toolboxes here. Yeah. And carts. So same. Yeah. Same over there. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. I love that. That's really efficient use of space. Okay. So we also do some light assembly. We'll do helicoils, pins, We'll put mating parts together. We don't have any bench testing or flow testing, so we can't do any of the higher end assemblies that require leakage testing, but yep. we can put, surely put locating pins, helicoils, and kit parts together for their assembly line, whatever customer we may be working with. They also run Pro Shop. We run Pro Shop everywhere, but they yep. have a single monitor system when they print their work instructions so that's in front of them at the tables because they could be okay. working anywhere within the area. Yep. So we haven't made them mobile with their digital data as of yet, but it's on the list of improvements to sure. to build into. And then pulling uh, helicoils and other inserts and hardware out of the COTS module. All COTS so, items, yes. So all inventory and, yep. yeah. Yeah, all of that rolls up to uh, cost of goods sold material and is measured on right. every job. And of course, certs would be scanned in at receiving, and so yep. they're linked automatically to the work orders. Rolls up to the AS9102. And Everybody gets an AS9102 because it's automatic. Right. So even medical device customers who don't require it, they get that nice packaged first article report automatically. Right. We don't have to do any extra work to do that. So it help it. us contain costs for sure. Do you have any clients that say that's too much of a report? We don't want that much or are they all happy to have it? There is one client in space sector uh -huh. that has their own that they want done. Oh. And I don't know why they have their own that they want done, but I think it feeds They're up trying to, to their. The wheel. Yeah. I think it feeds up to their end user. Oh, sure. Got it. All right. Cool. And then more standalone with um, same dual monitor setup. Same. It's the same throughout. Right. The only real difference is some places are on a Raspberry Pi, some places are on a um, Mini X, which is yep. a Windows based system i found that the linux system is so much faster for us yeah it doesn't have any of the things that slow windows based systems down so they okay. can log on they can get in they can do everything they need to do on pro shop the only thing we can't do with that is link to the document storage so they what they okay. call the k drive yeah we can't link to that but it doesn't so you matter still pull up your drawings and stuff it's drawings really... picks everything still loads right we just can't change anything Got which it. is fine it works perfectly for the shop floor right so they don't need gives, to be changing that. Gives us great revision control. Yeah. And dock control. So then, uh, so there's your tool crib area back yes, here. Yes, sir. We're so we store all of our tooling in these digitally locked cabinets using a kiosk with a tooling database. So we have a location and quantity on everything that's in those cabinets. Whenever somebody needs to pull a tool, they'll come to the kiosk, they'll, they'll log in, they'll pull the tool, it'll decrease inventory and the tool goes out to the floor. The tooling person, the tooling clerk in this area takes the tools after they're done with the job, evaluates them, whether or not they can be used again, yep. and we'll add them back into the system or destroy them and place a purchase order if we need to order more. It's okay. also where we store all of our fixtures. So okay. all of the fixtures you see in these yellow boxes are specific work holding or very specific tooling for jobs. Okay and they're also checked out and in. So we know where all of our work holding is, all of our toolboxes. We know where the tools are. Um, we're building towards using ProShop's tooling module. So yep. we know what's in the machines. Right. Uh, we're not quite there yet. We're, we're working okay. on some 
educating ourselves on APIs so we can see how we can hook these systems together. Sure. But we're working on that. Very good. Our end goal is to be automated. Right. You know, sure. open the open the, the the application and understand sure. it all. Yeah, yeah. So and how ready. long have you had a tool crib attendant? And when did you make that decision to, to have one? We've had a, a specific tool crib attendant for about 15 years. Oh, well, long So time. we started on a, an old Parlec presetter. And then we had okay. the attendant that would get all the jobs, preset all the tools, send them out to the floor. The presetter uh, became obsolete because Parlac was, well, became obsolete. Now they're, sure. I think, Omega. Okay. And it was no longer repairable. It broke. Okay. So we looked at the cost of investment versus what it takes to just set the tools at the machine. And it Within wasn't... Machine probing. It wasn't worth... Yeah, machine, machine probing. It wasn't worth the investment at the time. But since then, we started a process with our digital height gauges that may get us back into presetting okay. um, without having to buy a whole presetting system. So we're working on that, that project. So I know in some shops there's a debate whether or not the value of a tool crib attendant is worth the efficiencies that it gains on the shop floor. Mm -hmm. Clearly you think there's a good ROI for that person. Yeah, because since we've had a tool crib attendant and they've, they've gotten completely up to speed, uh, we haven't had any jobs sit because we didn't have a tool. Right. And we used to have that problem from time to time. We've had it zero percent. Right. So, so yeah, you it's, can it's keep those it. spindles turning because you're not waiting for a job to be kitted or mm -hmm. you don't realize a tool's not here or you don't have the thread gauge you need. Mm -hmm. That person's getting all that ready to go. Yep. Yeah. And they stage them on the carts that you'll see when we go this way, the set of people put them directly in the machines. Yeah and they're ready to go. They don't have to hang their own tools. Concentricity is not an issue. Tool tool length is not an issue. It's all verified. So is this an example of a, of a job that's being kitted? This is a job that's coming off. Okay. That needs to be put, put away. All right. So fixturing, tools coming out, everything's there, any applicable notes. Yeah, special, special holders, special yeah, cutters. Yeah, we gotta get down inside a casting. Yeah, right. This where is, are the ones that are getting actually prepped and kitted to go? So this the one, machines? this one is kitted and okay. ready to go. It's staged next. And then on this end, those two are being put together. And then yep. when they're ready, they'll go on carts. That's got a kit on it. It's ready to go out. Okay. Yep. So once we get our API established and everything's working, we can just push these right out to the machines, load the load the tooling carts, sure. and the, the set of people or operators can upload that right into their piece of equipment, and then programming can look out there and see, uh, I have to do this new job, it's gonna require these tools, let me see what's already in a machine, and maybe we can sure. help decrease lead time that way. We're just not quite there yet, yeah. we're working on it. Yeah, that's a complex system, but uh, definitely a lot of benefits once you can sure. get all the way there. And it gives us the opportunity to learn how to use APIs because that's exciting for me. I sure. love the technology side. <laughs> yeah. That's where, that's my wheelhouse. This is more fixturing storage. These are current fixtures that can be put on any of the vertical mills. We used to load them in two pallet changer mills that have aged out of existence. So we, okay. we got rid of those machines. And they now work in the horizontals them. too? They work on some of the tombstones in the horizontals. Not all of them have this same ball lock pattern, but right. all the verticals do. Okay. Yeah, we 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 formatted the, the subplates on all of our machines exactly the same. Yeah. Since the tombstones are a different size, it then didn't work over power. there. Yeah, depending on the size, sure. But there's not a lot of back and forth between permanently set up horizontals and verticals. And once we put the jobs there, that's where they, they go. stay there for the yeah. life of the job. And then these are, are these cataloged in the fixturing module? Yes, sir, they are in the equipment so, module. In the equipment, not fixturing. Equipment module. Okay. We put them in the equipment module because we build maintenance items around them for okay. AS compliance. Got so it. you have to be measuring, monitoring your fixturing, work holding, and tooling. So in the setup area, it'll still have the location which rack and shelf, and, and but use the, an equipment ID number. Yep, and it'll ping us to go check it on, an, on a date interval. So it keeps us reminded to go look at these fixtures and recertify yeah. them. Okay, yeah, I like it. It's That's a very smart. simple process. I mean, what they're looking for is just, does it still have its hardware? Sure. And is it usable? The The actual integrity of the fixture of the work holding is measured at the setup by first article. Is it holding 
to work correctly. Sure. You know. Cool. Uh, yeah, more double monitors everywhere. Yep, every workstation. Yeah. Manual machines are the only place we do not have a full pro shop set up. Right, sure. Is that mostly just uh, repairs and little things you need to do? You're not really making production parts? Qualification, repairs, if they need a pin for something, concentricity, gauge, they'll do a step gauge to check concentricity, things such as that. Yeah. Yeah. And then our storage for our all of our horizontals, surplus tombstones and fixtures that come off. All of our fixtures are either ball locked or pinned so they right. can come off and go back on with pretty good accuracy. And yeah. then they get probed inside the machine again. So sure. we can we can do a changeover fairly quickly. Nice. Any particular brand of uh, tombstone you've, you've really settled on or you just whatever works best for the Whatever is quickest lead time and best price. Right. Yeah, yeah, they all pretty much function the same for what we do. Okay. At least in our experience, a, a tombstone manufacturer happens to see this and wants to talk to me. They're <laughs> more than welcome sure. to sell me. So these are some of those 737 parts. Yes. Wow, those are a cool looking part. Yeah, this comes out of uh, out of plate stock. Yeah. And the plate stock is on the floor right there. Oh, sure. 7050, T7, 451, awesome. Yep, 7050 aluminum plate. And then the tools for checking the parts are here that were for whatever part we happen to be running. And sure. we're in the process of building kits for these that are by part number. So when they're using that part number's tools, they can have it down. When they're done, they can put it back on a shadow board. Got it. And we know where, where our tools are. Before it would just be gauges strewn across the table. Sure. And then they'd be running from system to system looking for that, that thread gauge. Right. Well, now we want to be able to identify it sure. and have a location set for it. And then your thread gauges are also tracked in the equipment module? Yep. For, for in the inspection equipment module and calibration. Yep. So for calibration and um, condition. So it's either in service or not in service. Yep. Out for calibration. Yep. Absolutely. And do you do a combination of calibrating some things in-house and some things you send out? We can't calibrate anything here. We can verify. We can verify. Okay. Anything that needs calibration has to go out to a calibration house. Uh, um, some things that require verification, we also send out. Thread gauges, you can't calibrate a, a solid thread gauge. You sure. can verify it's good. We send those out. We yep. can do it on our Kians because we have a, a video comparator that will yep. check that. But we like having... The so outside certification, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, big TV, as you said before. So they're going to be just obviously it looks like a wireless keyboard and mouse. Yep. And then uh, looking at uh, their in-process uh, or and or first article results. They'll get first article results. They get their they they capture their in-process data. Oh, and this is also Raspberry Pi, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not positive on this one. Yeah, yeah, yep, it, it is. The corner. It's a little different look than the windows. Yeah, but um, they yeah. just so there you go. They all, work so flawlessly. All green. That's good. That's what we shoot for. And <laughs> we didn't even pull that up in advance. Nope. It's all green. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. Um, and then so basically the same. Same setup, but you said uh, same types of machines, but slightly different. Some of them are newer, They're all, different features. All the same model number. They're yeah. all NH5000 DMG Mori's, but those were purchased in 2002. Okay. That one's 2017. This one's 2012. Okay. So the, these are the older pieces. Still running great. <laughs> and we can see right down the railroad track yep. there. Yeah, so double stacker. You said 34 pallets in this one? This one's 34. Nice. And this is an IPC in process. Okay, right in the at the moment here. Are you adding data to this, Raymond? Uh, Are you doing an IPC? Yeah, I'm doing a first article right now. Oh, it's first article? Okay. So he's getting a first article. Got it. So you're waiting for a first order. And so are you using the uh, sort of operator column to check here and then quality does their second check? Yeah. Is that how you guys do that? Yeah, that's how uh, we do it. Nice. 
and uh, do you have the like, so here's the this is green this is green and and a hyperlink because the drawing will be there so do you just have that up on another tab uh, your drawing as you're doing your inspection yeah. Right, you know exactly. Yeah, right on. Okay, very cool. Awesome. And you have, uh, I noticed on the, over there and also here, you have a uh, not super heavy duty cranes, but you do some heavier parts. 70, 77 pounds. 77 so that, pounds. That okay. center differential housing, 77 pounds. These start out casting at 37, end up at 28. But yeah. still, even in the 30s when you're lifting yeah, chest day. high and out. Yeah, that's, that's a little so hard. So we, we strap them and use our, our little winch crane. Okay. Awesome. For this plates as well, well, we'll add that lifting device. It's just got Allen oh, screws yeah. with teeth on the end and bite yeah. into it and pick it up, load it in the fixture, pull fixtures off that way. Got it. Got your lunch lunchroom area, lots of billet. You got yep. lots of chips to make here. Oh yeah, they're buying a lot of parts right now. Not mad about that. <laughs> What's the application for these differential houses? This is a Dana 60 size differential. That their biggest application is off road industry, so they go in mostly under jeeps. Oh yeah. Um, it's a company out of Huntington Beach that does a lot of off road stuff. Right. Also, I've seen them putting them in back in the rear end of those 392 Hemis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with half shafts or dog bone shafts. Sure. The center pumpkin and then the shafts for independent suspension. That's a really heavy duty, heavy duty rear end. Take a lot of power. Yeah, no kidding. So, yeah, manual area. Okay. The robot's ready if you want to catch that. Oh, sure. So our programmers get deeply involved. Mr. Mr. Lee here will design the fixtures, write the program, make the fixtures, write the program for the part, set up the part, and at times run the part all the way through. Right. So they're, they're invested in the process to make sure that they're handing off a verified process to a set of person or an operator that's going to work. Yep. And we're not going to have downstream problems with that. So there, you see a spree. Yeah. That's our programming software. So that's not a Raspberry Pi, obviously. That's a. No, no, he's running thing off. That can his, do programming. Yeah, yeah, he's running off his laptop. Okay, nice. Is that your spree or SolidWorks? Spree? He has both. Goes back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, they love the mobile stations. They plug right in. And, yeah, there's a SolidWorks. Oh, yeah. They plug right in and go for it. Yeah. No running back and forth. Just the USB C? Plug yeah. in a USB C or a yeah, or HDMI. Right on. And next, we're going to build ourselves a parts washer. You're going to build one? Yeah. We got a high volume pump. We got the uh, Schedule 80 PVC uh -huh. on the, the tank. We're going to cut the top and hinge it. And we're going to build a rack with spray nozzles in there. Yeah. We're going to put those plates for the 737. Oh yeah, and fire sure, it up sure. and rinse the plates before they they get deburred so they don't collect deburr deburr red wheel fines in the oh, residual sure. coolant and minimize the amount of fod and outside process fod. This guy is about ready to do its work, so let's get staged, Mark. So this thing uh, is going to. Do a cycle here, it looks like. And tell yeah. us who this is. This is Nedra. This is Nedra. This is the current owner's mother. She is one of the founders. So the Nedra robots. and Fred Mosey were the original founders. Fred and Nedra are Bob, mom and dad. Okay. And Bob's our current owner who's now retiring. His son, Nick, is our CFO. He's in the business now. So we're working on Gen 3. And yeah, she's. we named this <laughs> robot after Nedra. Got a picture of her, made a plaque. I love it. And then the other one... Over there is Freddie, and we yeah. have one more plaque in my office for Sheila, which is Bob's sister, who's, who's no longer with us. We have a robot in the back in storage that's going to go on that last lathe. That's going to be Sheila. 
All right. And then when we run out of family, we'll start naming them after, I guess, <laughs> tenured employees. We don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Well, let's see this thing run. All right. So do you want me to explain what it's going to do? Yeah, or? yeah. Sure, okay. Go for it. So the machine is ready for a switch out at this point. It has a finished part in the sub spindle. It has a half finished part in the main spindle. The robot's going to enter the machine, remove the sub spindle part, close the door. The machine's going to bring a wash and fan. So the wash is going to yep. come out, spray everything, yep. and then it's going to bring a fan out and blow everything to get the chips off. Biggest sure. thing you'll find in automation, the biggest obstacle is chips. Chip when management, you're running yeah. door closed system, lights out, or even while you're here, but not manning it directly, those chips are what give you, end up giving you discrepant parts. Sure. You know? So we wash, spend a lot of time of the cycle or a good portion of the time making sure the machine's clean inside so we don't have scrap from chips. So after it comes out, closes, does its wash, it's going to place that finished part here yep. on this side. It's going to come over here and use its vision system to locate this part. Once it locates it, it'll pick it up, take it to that pedestal, use the pedestal to compress a spring that helps it load the part all the way into the jaws. Oh, okay. And so then reloads the spring that pushes the right amount of force into the jaw. Yes. And in that time, hopefully the machine's done washing, the door will open, main spindle will be loaded, robot will come out, close the door, the machine will begin its full cycle again. You well, ready? And how long does it run for? It runs about 30 minutes okay. per, there's a lot of coloring on this part because it does have a feature on the side of the round part. So we run about 30 minutes right. per, yeah, you can see here, we got to come in between these and, yeah, stitch, and surface that. All of that, yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's see it go. All right, go ahead, Mark. Well, that moves pretty quick. That's at about 75%. Oh, is it? Okay. Release it and pushes it down. Okay, that's cool. Now, as soon as that machine's finished cleaning, it'll begin again. If it fills a layer, either depletes a layer entirely, which is out of material at this point, but it either fills a layer or depletes a layer, it'll put its tooling down, grab the suction cup tool from that tree, yep. and it'll grab a slip sheet and put it down on this side, or take one off of this side and put it away. Oh, so it can just go through stacks of material and stacks sure. of parts. Yep. That's pretty wild. That's how we clear like a weekend's worth of work. Got it. All right. So the main spindle is ready to go. When did you install these robots? Our first one is on the other side. And we did that about eight years ago. And this one, we've had this system, what, about four, four years or three years? We've been speaking to a software company that does machine monitoring at a higher level. Oh, and yeah. we're going to probably be, well, we are going to be moving forward with direct machine monitoring. Okay. And yep. hopefully a connection to ProShop with that as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we have a number of companies that have connections with ProShop on machine monitoring side. So then after everything's done here, it heads to QA for final, uh, yep. they do. final buy off. They do first article, they do in process and final. So anything that's coming inside from an outside process runs through quality. Periodically throughout the day, QA will monitor the equipment, make sure that that um, the IPCs are happening at the machine. With that new feature that came out not too long ago, it gives them a little icon to let them know too. So right. that's great, the little check mark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they like not. that. And so you have operators and quality both doing in process, like mm -hmm. checking each other? The operators are responsible for collecting the dimensions. Quality is responsible for monitoring that to okay. make sure that they're being collected and they're verifying that they are, they right. are in fact I agree good. with the measurements. Yeah. yeah, we try to build layers into it. Sure. So we keep that DPPM down. Yes, of course. Well, welcome to inspection. Thank you. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> right, Ron? <laughs> So parts will come from the floor for various reasons, in process, first article, whatever they may need, and they get checked on the on the different pieces of equipment. We have a manual CMM, 
We have a LED comparator, CNC CMM with scanning capability. Yep. We have our Keyence optical measuring machine for smaller parts. That's a pretty cool machine. It checks instantly. Sure. Yeah. And then digital height gauge and everything else you would imagine in a in sure a, in a QA lab. QC lab. Yep. So everything in this building runs through here at some point. And also in in and out of out, of uh, outside processes mm -hmm. would come in here. So like in process. Yeah. This is where bit, where they do like visual inspection of anodized or or other plating or things like that. Receiving inspection and preparation for sending to OP. All of it. So we have outgoing inspection, incoming inspection. We have IPC inspection, first article inspection, and final. Right. All of that. And this is not where the actual final document package is created. No, that's, that's, that's systemic. It's built right. in ProShop and sure. then printed out or digitally sent to the customer by by a customer service. Okay. Yeah. And how so. what, I'm curious what percentage of your customers want that paper FAI versus an electronic submission? I don't know. That's a good question. Ron. And What's that? And percentage of customers that require an AS9102 versus just 50. by half? But everybody gets it. Yes, everybody gets it. Does anybody ever say, we don't want it and you have to do something different? <laughs> um, for Beckman, well, for first articles, it's their own specific one. Oh, yeah. Medical laboratory. Yeah. Right. yeah. And how many of them do you submit electronically via email or upload versus printing out paper and sending it with the parts? Um, only Beckman requires it for first articles on a brand new part, brand new uh, yeah. submission. But everyone else gets it via, via email. Portals. Via email. Yes, portals. Yeah. Nice. Most of them have portals. You yeah. upload portals. Sure. It's a better way to do it. You don't have to print any paper at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, so here's uh, an inspection plan with uh, which which is kind of as you said, just for the benefit of the folks, is hap happening at all different operations mm -hmm. and culminates in the collective AS ninety one oh two package, right? This one is actually an operation. And you can see on this, it differentiates with the letters. The letters on the DIM tag number yep. tell us if it's in process or not. So those, if it's an in process dimension, it doesn't, they don't want it on AS9102. Sure. So that's how ProShop knows yep. that not to submit those to AS9102. But yeah, this is the inspection plan for operation 1385, which would be an outside process operation. Okay. So the vendor is doing something for you and you're verifying it. It's probably the grind operation on this part, I would imagine. Okay. And that's the shop. Yeah. From beginning in shipping through final inspection and we end up back in shipping where they'll print pack slips, pack its parts and send them on their way. Fantastic. Sometimes it's, it's labels, depends on what the customer wants. We have a dedicated label printer. They sometimes they're barcoded, QR coded or whatever. Sure. Whatever they need, we can do anything they would, they need us to do. Yeah. Well, John, thank you so much. I know, I mean, you have a beautiful shop. Thank it's you. so well thought out, so well organized. I know it'll be interesting and inspiring for people to see it and uh, hopefully thank prospective you. customers as well. Yeah, well, it's, okay. it's all, all these guys, they do all of it. I just, I'm just here. <laughs> Well, it's, yeah, I've really enjoyed getting to know you and the company clearly has a very family feel, a very team kind of culture. Yeah, it's and, important. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's been serving you guys really super well. So thank you again so much for yeah, everything. Absolutely, good to see you as always. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Paul.